Welcome back gamers, this is Cyrus and Rise of Kingdoms, and today we're going to talk about gatherers. Alright, so there's a couple of things I want to go into before we go into the normal talents and like how to build them, because it's actually a, a pretty simple setup for the gatherer tree. Um, but one of the things that I want to explain to everybody is the value that you get with gatherers. The first thing you really want to take into consideration is who you should use, or who you should level up. All right, and right now on the screen you can see that these two right here are two gatherers. All right, Cleopatra and Siondo, uh, both of them are fantastic as you level them up. Um, they have, well, specifically Cleopatra has a different field use, which is, in my opinion, much more valuable than her as a gatherer until way later in the game. Um, but that's why she has the points that she has invested. Uh, with Sondia, the points that I have invested are literally just from the uh, sculptures of her specifically that I've gotten. Uh, whereas Cleopatra, I think I might have spent like four universal sculptures to, to actually max that out. Um, you'll notice as we go further that there are a couple other gatherers in the epic tier, for instance. Uh, we've got Joan of Arc, we've got Matilda of Flanders down further down. Um, both of these are fantastic gatherers. Their skills are going to give you a lot of value while they're out getting that, uh, getting those resources for you faster, or more of them. All right. Having said that, I do not have any of my gatherers leveled up currently. Now, mind you, I'm under 4 million power, so this is for beginners. This is not for, you know that middle grade where you have more commanders than you know what to do with. This is taking advantage of what you have and what you can get easily and what you can level easily. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a real basic comparison. And we're actually going to go from the top to the bottom. I'm going to look at Cleopatra. We're going to go to her skills. If you look at the bonus gathering speed for stone, at cap, she's going to get 30% increased speed for that, and then there's 20% on everything else. Her load bonus can go up to 50%. She's going to give uh, some siege bonuses, which is great if you're being attacked. Ideally, you don't want that to happen, so pay attention to your gatherers. Generally speaking, you can avoid a lot of that. Um, and then right here, extra resources. And this is another big deal. All right, so this one, this one, and this one are all fantastic skills. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to compare high-quality apples to low-quality apples, all right? So like I said here, we've got 30 and 20, and we've got a max of 50 with extra resources when they finish a node. So if we go down and we look at, say, Constance, all right, she's going to give me 20%. And then 15%, 30% instead of that 50%, and she's going to give me 10% extra resources instead of resource packs. Resource packs are more valuable um, because they can't be taken from you. But you can also just use those resources when you're at this point in the game fairly easily. In fact, it's, it's easy to say that if you're an active player, and by active I mean you're at least getting on three, four times a day to check your stuff and, and keep it rolling, um, you're going to be fighting resources more than you're going to be fighting anything else. All right? So what we're looking at here is when we compare it again, uh, we're looking at that 20 instead of 30. We're looking at that 15 instead of 20. That's really not that big of a difference. All right? We get a little bit bigger difference here with 30% instead of Cleopatra's 50%. And then here, uh, up to 10% instead of those resource packs. Okay. So, comparable, but not obviously in, it's, it's obviously in Cleopatra's uh, uh, favor. All right. What the real difference that comes with this is, I don't use these commanders for anything other than very specific tasks that I don't need them very high leveled up for. All right, um, which leaves all of my universal elite sculptures 
for my gatherers, which allows these gatherers to be stronger than anything else I have in my in my field. All right, and if you look at leveling, you can see where I have invested my time. All right, these gatherers gain experience while out in the field. These gatherers do not are doing what they're supposed to be doing anyway. You know, like they're supposed to be doing PvP. They're supposed to be doing PvE. They're going to get experience doing that PvE. These don't get experience gathering. So the only way these guys are going to get experience is if I put them behind a commander that's doing PvE or I feed them books. All right. With that said, these are two of my highest level commanders. Both of them, you'll notice, are at uh, the level 37. And I'll explain why in just a second once we get into talents. All right. So remember, when you're doing your commanders, deal with what you have and shoot for what you want. You're going for the biggest buck or biggest bang for your buck. All right. Since I'm not using those commanders, uh, the F elite sculptures for anything other than uh, my gatherers, I can upgrade my gatherers much faster than I could if I was trying to upgrade my elite or epics or legendary gatherer commanders. Long run, definitely get your epics and uh, legendary commanders raised up. There's so much more value in that. But when you're fighting resources, when you don't have at least two legendaries that you can rely on for combat or for defense, um, then you're going to want to go ahead and Focus on the lower tiers because these are going to give you more value than, say, a Lancelot or um, a. Well, actually, she's she's arguably really amazing for her own purpose. All right, Gaius Marius is another one of those gathering commanders. He's got a lot of value in him. All right, so I have three gathering commanders that I have in a really good spot for gathering, but these two are definitely my best. And now we're going to show you why. All right. So before we mentioned that uh, Cleopatra, just do this the easy way. Uh, Cleopatra is going to give you that 30% gathering speed and 20% gathering speed. And then, say Constance, for instance, she's going to give you 20% and 15. All right. So you're losing a little bit of value on your overall speed. However. Because Constance is able to get maxed out in her skills, actually Sarko is the first one to get maxed out, but she's going to be maxed out much faster than Cleopatra is, I can get her level up and offset that difference with talents. All right, And this is a very simple talent build. Um, it's, there's nothing complicated about this. It's actually uh, really intuitive when you get into it. Um, you might think, oh, well, you know, you talked about skills. You're not going to use them. She's not super fighting. What about integration? You're going to get some march speed out of it, probably at best. Your real value is going to come off of these four and these three. And here's why. If you go in here, that's 30% increased gathering speed. All right? We were talking about a, a difference of 10 and 5 with between Cleopatra and Constance in their uh, relative gathering fields. This makes up for it. And that's three five points, all right? In fact, in four points, you've already made the difference, okay? Again, another 30%. In fact, every one of these covers all four of your resources, and all of them are 30% buffs. That's huge, all right? You go over here, troop defense while gathering resources on the map. I mean, yes, you do have to pay attention to your gatherers. Ideally, you're going to try to get them out of there as quickly as possible. This is here so that I can get this. Over here, however, an additional 6% resource on completion of gathering. You stack that on top of Constance's other ability, and you're looking at a very sizable chunk of resources coming back to you on top of what you're already gathering while you're out there. So you're getting them faster, and on top of that, you're getting more per node uh, just by having her leveled up. This is the big one, though, all right? For five points, I'm getting 25% to all gathering, all right? 25% speed to all gathering. You stack that on top of these right here, and you're looking at 55%, 55% on top of her skills, all right? 
So when she's maxed out, she's going to be looking at 75% at gathering wood. She's going to be looking at 70% for food and stone. She's going to be looking at, uh, that's going to stay the same. And she's going to be looking at 16% additional resources upon completion. That's huge. She doesn't get a gold bonus. That comes from her talents. So that's going to be 55%. Still solid. Uh, you look at Sarka. Sarka's actually, she's my, my champ here. Um, she's looking at 18% gathering speed across all four. That's fantastic. Stack on top of that 55% that you get from your uh, talents, same way, and that goes up quite a bit. You get that extra load uh, percentage, and then on top of that, well, actually she just had extra points. So keep that in mind. When you're putting, your, uh, putting them together, these talents, those levels that you're getting, are going to be worth far more than the skills that you're getting by comparison. And then if you look at the commanders that you're playing with, you're going to be able to get a lot faster value out of your elites. And there's even an argument to be made for your Centurion, right? Um, you don't start getting resource bonuses until he gets here, but he still has the gathering tree, all right? So keep that in mind. You know, if you can't get Sarka, you can't get Constance. You can get Constance if you want to, but you're going to... The easy way to get Constance is to fight getting Ethelflaed sculptures. So unless your Ethelflaed is maxed out, don't do that. And if your Ethelflaed's maxed out, then there's a really good chance you don't need to do that. But you can also buy constant sculptures in the uh, Expedition um, store. So if you're looking for one or two and you know your, your Ethelflaed's sitting on a good spot or you don't use her as regularly as, say, I do, then, yeah, you know, go ahead. Spend a, a little bit to to get that extra skill point. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's all about doing what's going to work for you right now and get you able to get into that mid and uh, late game faster, right? You want to make sure that you're able to keep your empire rolling. You don't want to have down times on your builds. Um, you don't want to have down times on your army uh, production. You want to be able to have the resources necessary to keep that rolling. And if you're an active player, that can be an issue. Um, if you're an inactive player, actually, that can be even more of an issue, depending on how, uh, how you spend your time in game. But just keep that in mind, that you want to make sure that your resources, like I've said in other videos, resources king. All right? So you want to make sure that these are the commanders that you're going to really get the highest value out of, um, because they're the ones that are going to fuel the rest of your empire. So, a couple of things about gathering resources. We're just going to go here and do some resource gathering that isn't, uh, isn't on map. When you're gathering resources, if you are gathering my border for my alliance, is purple here. If you're gathering resources, like say I'm gathering this gold node right here, okay? That gold node is going to give just me the resource. If I come down here... In fact, we'll just scroll out just a little bit. And say I was getting this stone node, or this wood node, versus even this one. All right, this is going to give me those resources. There are alliance techs that are going to make it to where I gather those resources faster. And the alliance itself is going to get a portion of those resources that it can use to build flags, um, to build... Uh, fortresses. Um, it's overall going to increase the value of the time you're spending in the game, which is really the goal here. Making sure that you're taking care of you and your friends so that they can help and take care of you as well. You work together, you survive. You work individually, well, that doesn't play out so well um, as uh, history will show. Basically, you stand together or you die alone. That's kind of the, the gist of this game. All right, so when you're gathering resources and you're doing it in your own territory, there are alliance technologies that will increase the speed that you're doing that. Plus, if you're doing it in an alliance territory, there's a better chance that you're going to have a straight path back to your base on that alliance territory. And there are alliance techs that will increase the speed of marching uh, while you're on your alliance territory. So altogether, 
by gathering resources that are on your alliance territory, you're going to get more value. You're going to get your guys out there faster. You're going to get them back faster. And they're going to be able to provide not just you, but also your alliance with those resources. That's a really, really high value type deal. Now, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you got to go outside of the borders because you're looking for, say, gold, for instance, like this right here. And maybe there's not any gold in your alliance territory. Go get it. No problem with that. In fact, by getting it, it'll help it spawn somewhere inside of your territory. Not by, you know, I got it, so it's going to go into my territory kind of thing. But just in the fact that it's in an area, and in this particular case, it's not in your territory. So the odds are there's going to be a chance that it's going to pop up in your alliance territory for its next spawn. So just keep that in mind, right? You're going to get a lot more value by uh, working inside of your own borders than you are outside of it. On top of that, it's also just easier to defend your guys, right? Like right here, say there's an alliance node, right? Or there's an, a regular resource node right here. Say it's a three wood, okay? If someone comes over to stomp me, they can attack me at that wood. Okay, they can go in, they can just kill my gatherers, and I am out of luck. So what would I be able to do? Well, aside from going straight to base, if I pop out over here, I can just throw my guys inside the uh, flag or move it into one of my allies' bases nearby, right? That keeps my, my gatherers alive and the resources that they've gathered rolling. So you do want to keep an eye on your gatherers. Don't just set them out and then be like, ah, oh, I'm never going to see them again. I don't care until they get back. You know, because that's a really good way of getting your guys attacked, especially during kill events like uh, Mightiest Governor. The last two days of that, people specifically look for gatherers that are just off on their own, doing their own thing. Because it's an easy kill, it's easy points. So when you're gathering resources, try to gather in your own territory. You're going to be faster on it, you're going to gather more, you're going to gather faster. When you're choosing your commanders for gathering, you'll see the two that I have out right now. I have Sarka out, and I have Centurion out, right? In fact, I need to send out Constance. I'm going to go ahead and just do that real quick and show you something. I'm going to go... Yeah, there we go. Here's a stone node. Now, you'll notice I zoomed out a little bit. You can still see the nodes from that point. You just have to know what icons to look for, right? That's an icon. Um, there's this one right here, that little shield right there. That's an alliance node, so that's not gonna. I, I can't send a gatherer to that. That's resources that are just going into the alliance bank. So that's a totally different animal, which I may or may not make a video on because that's more advanced stuff. That you'd probably get more value out of a, a better content creator like uh, Chisgul or Wick. Um, I don't think I've seen one of the videos for them when it comes to alliance stuff, but. Uh, if they have it, that's where I will look. Um, so just keep that in mind. When you're kind of as a recap, use the resources that you have. And by those resources, I mean the commanders that you can easily level up, um, that you can easily skill up, that aren't going to impact the growth and development of the rest of your forces, right? Um, eventually, absolutely, trade up. Always trade up. But... Don't use, I'm not going to use Cleopatra if I have Constance available, right? If I do, I'm going to have her as a backup for the extra uh, skill bonuses. So just keep that in mind, right? I know it seems obvious for some of you, but it's not obvious for others. It's a really, really powerful way of taking the best advantage of your guys as you have them. So I'm not going to level her up and get three points into her when I can take Constance and bring her up to... Or Sarka, for instance, and run her five 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 five, right? If I'm using, if I'm comparing commanders, Cleopatra right now is way underpowered compared to my Sarka. My Sarka is going to get me way more resources, way faster, and get back home safely. Cleopatra, not so much. Um, Siondo, same thing. Although Siondok does have a very special uh, place in my heart for gathering gold. So keep that in mind as well. If, when you're looking at their abilities, look at their abilities. See what their skills do. The talent tree on all these gatherers is going to be the same. 
right? You know how soccer works. You know how sales works. But the skills are going to be different. So use your commanders for the things that you're looking for. If you're going to look and you find a gold node, and you know that you're also going to be looking for a wood node, and when you go to select your commanders, if you have your Sangha uh, tagged out, and you're going to get more from her, don't do that gold node first. Or change the commander and use her. And then go over to the wood node where someone like Constance, who gets a, an additional bonus on uh, wood, use her for that. Because you want to make sure that you guys are out there as short a period of time as possible before they get back to you and deliver those resources. Um, there is one more thing. Uh, there's... <laughs> The, my alliance likes to say there's a special place in hell uh, for people who do this. Um, when you're doing a resource node, drain it. The only time you shouldn't drain a resource node is if an emergency is called. And basically an emergency should amount to one of two things. You're under attack, or your officers or leader needs you to get a march somewhere fast. And that's the closest army you have to, to do it. Go ahead, call your guys back. Try to keep it in mind so that the next person who's looking for resources doesn't come across a 46k resource tag, right? That's hardly worth the trip, okay? There's ways around it. You can uh, inflate your uh, army, and then you'll go and you'll get this one, and then move over to say this one, and that's, that's fantastic by all means. Please be the vacuum cleaner for your alliance. You're gonna uh, you're gonna make a lot of friends doing that kind of stuff. But uh, don't don't leave one there because you don't have the forces to clean it up. Look for one that's smaller, or send a second army out to go and take care of that for you. Right? Um, it's just a it's a it's a nice thing to do because that's gonna lock up the node. There's gonna be one less node for other people to take advantage of. And instead, they're going to be the ones cleaning up after you. Clean up after yourself. It's just the, the right thing to do. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to gatherers. Uh, level 37 is the level when you can get all those gathering points uh, in your talents. That's, uh, that's where it's tapped out. There's a couple others in here, and we're just going to kind of go over why I don't use these. Um, I do not classify my gatherers as combat units, especially my elite combat, uh, my elite commanders. This is not going to give me a lot of value. I would rather get my, my gatherers back home faster, right, um, than worry about how many of them died on the trip back home. Um, yet generally speaking, if my guys get caught out, they're caught out. They're going down unless I'm being clever. Right? So that's why I pay attention to them and I don't try to let them get caught out. Um, march speed of Siege Unit. This is actually huge, and I can't believe I've missed this. So I might go ahead and level them up for an extra three points, because if that's 30%, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, that's, that made this whole video worth watching, or worth making, right there. Um, I wouldn't do it before I got these, but now that I do, I'm definitely going to invest uh, three points into that. I'm really curious, because that's a substantial boost to speed. Um, you'll see, like, defense, um, you know, uh, once again, attack. These are siege units, man. They're really not going to give you a lot of value in that regard, so don't try to, you know, don't, don't. Don't waste points here. Don't worry about leveling your gathering commanders past the point where you don't need them to be um, until that's all you have left to do, right? You you really want, and I'm going to go ahead and say 40 points so that you can get this. Uh, I can't believe I missed that in the past. But you're going to want 40 points. You're going to want to go ahead and get this. And uh, from there, you're done. Like, you don't have to mess with her anymore. There's no more point, uh, no more skill books that I'm going to have to throw in there. I can use that secondary spot on my marches for somebody else to gain experience because she's capped out. She's done what she needs to do. There's an argument to be made, and I just don't think it's a super great one, 
then some of these additional skill trees you're going to be able to pick up extra uh, march speed but now that i've seen this 30 percent, i don't care i i really don't that nothing's going to give you that level of uh of march speed for your siege units which is what you should be gathering with um then then that talent there's there's just no way so that's fantastic so please go ahead and take advantage of those gathers because you get into this and i'll just give you an example i'm getting ready to upgrade to level 21 okay i'll be ours yeah 21 so i'll be getting my feudal age look at the resources required to do that we're looking at 16.2 million 16.2 million 7 million all right these are the resources that i have now granted over the last little bit we've been in a war and so we have to spend a bunch of other resources elsewhere i haven't had an opportunity to really dump this in but i also just got done making my wall which was about half of that in each of the resources so resources are going to give you so much value it is so important to keep that stocked up all right um but with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a pretty clean uh, episode when it comes to understanding what gatherers do, how to make them work for you, and uh, I even learned something in the process. So I hope that you did as well, and you guys have a wonderful day, good hunting, and I'll see you in the next episode.